Hello everyone, uh, glad you're here with us today. We are just on the southern boundary of Prince Albert National Park and uh, what I have here is a, a road cut that we wanted to look at today. Uh, something really exciting actually because we don't see this very often in our forest soils here in the province. And so I just want to talk a little bit about the soil profile and uh, if you're wondering why I have a tie and shirt on today, I always joked with my grad students that uh, I would uh, someday on a field trip be wearing a coat and tie because a lot of the pictures that I saw from the 50s and 60s uh, had a lot of the professors dressed up really nice when they're out in the field and I thought hey I'm gonna give it a try so here we are today and uh, I just want to share a little bit about the eco site for this place as well as the soil profile and uh, we'll get into understanding how to classify this profile so when you look at this profile, I want you just to have a quick look at this and just in your own mind, think where you would put the horizon boundaries for this particular profile. Uh, there's a lot of different colors going on here which would help you in identifying what the different horizons are, but I'm going to show you what I think are the basic horizons for this soil profile. Starting at the top, starting at about here, we have this really nice darker uh, colored layer, which I would, which is the AH. So this surface horizon, then below it we started moving into more of a reddish color and I would actually put a boundary something like this through there and we would call this a BM horizon and then below this here um, because I apply this acid to it, it has carbonates in it and so it's fizzing and so you know that you're dealing here with a CCA. So AH, BM, and a CCA. There's two other really interesting things about this profile that I want to point out and one is this right here. You can notice that there is a hole in the wall of this pit and there's some kind of mammal has a tunnel through here and this can be really important in terms of bioturbation, the movement of soil around. I mean a lot of times we'll have gophers and stuff that will bring uh, soil material to the surface which can alter then soil development but again uh, you notice this in the soil profile that we do have a hole here from probably some kind of mammal, mole or whatever. But the other thing I want to point out is this really light region right here going through the profile. And if I put the acid to it, it just really has a lot of carbonates in it. A lot of carbonates. And it's interesting that it's just this particular spot right here that has these really whiter kind of um, material compared to the rest of the CCA and this is actually due to a root system that is here that is absorbing or transpiring a lot of water. It's pulling a lot of the carbonates towards the root surface but the roots can't take up all the carbonates and so they get deposited next to the root and actually there's a little bit of a root right here and so you get these little areas within these kinds of soils where you get this high enrichment of calcium carbonates next to the root surface because the trees are transpiring water they're sucking all the calcium in the soil solution and it gets deposited here and here you see this nice linear feature of a carbonate uh, ring around a root system. I just want to talk a little bit about the uh, eco site for this particular spot again we are on the southern edge of the boreal forest and uh, we're dealing here with a chernozemic soil but if you look at the vegetation in the background, you can see a lot of trembling aspen, a few balsam poplars, and some white spruce. And if you go through the ecosite key here, we would actually be in the deciduous ecosite key with a stand that has a greater than 30% of trembling aspen. And when you go through this key, it ends up being a BP6. And if you turn to that in the book, it's a trembling aspen beaked hazel sarsaparillo ecosite on a fresh loamy sand. And so this is very characteristic of these kinds of sites with trembling aspen, a little bit of uh, white spruce in the canopy, but you find a lot of beaked hazel and other kinds of herbs and uh, shrubs, but this would be classified as a BP6. And if you think about what we've seen uh, some other times in terms of being in a jack pine forest, there's very little vegetation in many of those jack pine BP2, BP3 ecosites. And if you look here, there's a great diversity of uh, herbs and shrubs and trees. And a lot of the reason for that is the relationship between this vegetation and the soil pit. This soil pit will hold, this soil here will hold a lot more moisture. And because of that moisture, you're going to have increased amounts of richness in terms of vegetation 
on this particular site. I just want to go over the classification of this soil pit. Again, just to refresh your memories, we have an AH, AHE that's about 20 centimeters thick, a BM horizon here that is about 50 centimeters thick, and then we have our CCA starting at about 70 centimeters. And so in order to classify this chernozim, we need to know what the color is of the AH horizon. And so I've already taken a sample, dried it down, and used the uh, color chart to do that. And it turns out that when we do the color on the dry soil, we're dealing with a value of anywhere between three and a half and four and a half, and a chroma that's about one and a half, maybe almost two. But, um, and because of that, this classifies out as a dark gray great group. And then because the BM horizon is greater than five centimeters, this would actually end up being an orthic dark gray chernozem. So here's a close up of the three different horizons, your AH, your BM, and your CCA. And uh, if you look at this closely, I've dried out some samples here on the right hand side, and just to get an idea of texture. And when you actually do the texture for this, this actually turns out to be a loamy, uh, very fine sand, actually for all three horizons. And so a uh, very fine particle material, particle material. And you can see again, just to give a close up demonstration of the acid, you can see how effervescent it is in terms of fizzing with the reaction of the acid with the uh, calcium carbonates. Now, because this is very fine texture, uh, the parent material for this particular area would be glacial fluvial. And so this particular area, because there's no rocks in the soil pit, um, this would be a glacial fluvial type parent material. Let's just talk about the forest floor classification here, the humus classification. And again, on the surface here, we have a little bit of litter, which would be your L but the rest of the material is kind of all incorporated into your mineral soil. You have a lot of roots and stuff in here. And because of this AH horizon, we're dealing with a mall humus form, which means that you've got your, all your forest floor organic matter embedded into your mineral soil. So a mall humus form for this particular profile. In terms of soil drainage for this particular profile, um, we've done the texture and we said it was a loamy, very fine sand. And so going through the drainage class chart, uh, if you go through the scenarios here, um, you get to rapid and very rapid, which means that it's got a very coarse kind of um, sandy material. And the one after that is a well-drained soil, which means that you have a loamy, very fine sand, which is what the texture we've classified for this particular profile. So the drainage class would be well drained, meaning that it has more water available than that for a very rapid or rapid. And we associate typically those kinds of uh, drainage classes with our jack pine stands that have, uh, have the medium to uh, fine sand in them. Just to summarize this soil profile, we're again at the southern edge of the boreal forest just by PA National Park. And uh, we have a, a lovely chernozemic soil. And chernozems are characterized by the AH horizon. And this particular profile has a 20 centimeter thick AH horizon, which characterizes this particular profile as an orthic dark gray chernozem. If we were, however, just to go up the road to the top of the hill, what happens is that we get very little development of a BM horizon. And so we actually end up getting just an AH right into a CCA and this would make it a Rigo dark gray chernozem. So there is some variability going on across the landscape here, but this is a wonderful road cut that you can see very clearly the development that has happened here to produce a chernozem soil.